Hey everyone, John here from ContraBIM, and in this video, we want to talk about how to exchange information from a data set stored outside of ARCHICAD. The best way of doing this is through our properties exchange function, although with the new Python scripting ability, this is going to kind of open a whole new world into this data automation. So in this video, we actually have a uh, sample download that you can check out and follow along with, and um, we'll walk through the steps of loading up composite structures uh, which contain a lot of different assemblies of different uh, information for all the different layers that we have packed into those and uh, we'll walk through this workflow and i'll show you how quick and easy it is to use a vlookup formula to apply it to your entire data set so let's jump into it and i'll show you all about it All right, welcome everyone. So in this video, we're digging deep into how we can store and manage information outside of ARCHICAD, but then quickly load it into our different uh, composite structures for walls, slabs, and roofs. Um, because with composites, there's a lot of different layers of information that we can store within them, um, not only in the geometry, but also uh, with the data that represents these different layers and so with this workflow that i'm going to demonstrate today it's really going to help break down this process so that you can manage the information associated with each of these different layers much more easily so okay before we jump into the full-blown workflow here i have a little sample file that you can actually go and download um, so the one of the key formulas here that really help us kind of manage this information and apply it to our model elements is um, what we're calling a VLOOKUP formula. Now, what's great about this is it allows us to essentially reference a table here. We can make this table as large or as small as we'd like. Um, and what it allows us to do is whenever this formula finds a matching value over on this side, um, let's just copy a cell and paste it in, it's going to populate um, this cell with wherever it finds and, uh, you know, with whatever it finds that has the associated value over here. So we can take this and we can just copy it up in this case. And you'll see that because there's nothing over in these cells, um, these will not populate. But as soon as we start pasting content in, it's going to populate. As soon as we adjust the values down here, it will be updated. So this is a really simple uh, just way of managing information. We can do this in uh, two or more columns. Um, and to break down how this formula works, um, it, we're actually wrapping it up in an in, in if error formula so that we don't get these uh, NAs uh, when we don't have a matching cell. Like for an example, if we have a matching value here, it will return the right value. But if we don't have anything, then it will return an NA. So that's why we wrap these up in a, um, a formula that includes an if error. But as we walk through this formula here, so if we have a VLOOKUP, the cell that we're trying to reference here is going to be the cell just exactly to the left. So as we click up here, you can see that moves with our formula. And then we're always referencing the same uh, table array down below. That's why we have these little dollar signs between our columns and rows, which essentially just freezes our table array. So we can take this formula and we can copy it around. So the uh, this number two here is just it's returning our column based off the index number. So this would be column one, which would be our type. Column two, in this case, is our cost uh, data. And then this last option here, true or false, is just whether it's a uh, exact match or a partial match. We have this set up as a false because we want it to be an exact match. Okay, so uh, yeah, I'll leave a link uh, to the blog and you can go ahead and download this just so you can play around with this formula and um, yeah you can start building on this data set and um, really the sky's the limit for how much you want to include um, in these types of uh, these tables here so okay let's take a look at how this can be used on a, a much larger scale now I'm just going to hit save on this and close this one down and so with this philosophy in this workflow kind of in mind, 
um, within ARCHICAD here, we can start um, setting up some reports to not only manage just one scope at a time, but we can manage all of our different wall types, uh, slab types, roof types, all at once, and uh, manage all the information within them uh, all at once as well. And the best way of doing this is uh, I like setting up these reports that I call just model detailed reports. And so let's check out our composite assemblies detail report. And um, some we'll discuss quickly some of the types of information that we are listing in this particular case. So we are certainly listing some specific uh, codes. Uh, having the uh, composite structure listed is always really useful. Um, as we start panning over here to the right though, you can see that we have like outside finish types and finish costs. So this is really, really useful. Um, and this is really where we start using those uh, table arrays um, to associate this value with this value. And we'll demonstrate that here in a few moments. So we have that for finish types, sheathing types, framing types, um, interior sheathing, interior finishes, um, different types of furring. We have different types of insulation here. And all of these can be managed in the same exact manner of having two columns and essentially just associating the information based off the descriptions here. So, okay, with that, let's uh, actually open up a file that I have loaded, set up here. Um, so we have this... Uh, well, actually, before I do that, let's just go ahead and I'm going to um, go, the, go to the interoperability, classifications and properties, and we'll just go ahead and export these properties out. Um, I have two versions of the same file here. One, which is just the pure properties, and then one is the composite assemblies for import. So we'll just take the, we'll overwrite the, the properties values, and we'll open up this file. So we'll replace it and open it up. And okay, so here we are. We have a, in this case, a very large data set, um, lots of information here. And this is really the first step of getting the information out so that we can then start conditioning it and preparing it for bringing back in. So, okay, with this, let's, um, one thing I always like to point out is uh, whenever you export your properties, there's always a hidden row here. It's called, it's just, it's always row one. So let's unhide this. And I always just want to point out that these values at the top row and in column A, these are the GUIDs that help us relate these values back and forth with our Excel exchange. So it's always important to make sure if you're moving this information around that we are moving the GUIDs with it. So, okay. Next step here. So you can take this information and we can, um, then we can just copy and paste it into another version of this that actually contains all of our below the line information here as well. So um, I'm going to unsplit this and just kind of pan down here to the bottom. And so you can see here, if we zoom in, this is the same exact formulas that we had before where we had a lookup value and a table array. And so as we pan down here, we can see obviously this is expanded uh, quite a bit compared to um, the little sample file, but it's the same exact philosophy here. Um, in this case, we're actually kind of blending imperial and metric units where um, like for our JIP board wall assemblies here, we actually started with it in imperial units with imperial cost and then we can just apply some formulas here to kind of convert that to metric for us and then we can always go in and just override these if we want to round these numbers out or adjust them one way or another so there's a little bit of extra information in this particular report just because we've kind of uh some of these values are actually driven from their like if we if i adjust this one here you can see that this adjusted as well. It's driven from the uh, imperial equivalent values. Okay, so what we can do now is um, you can see that we have this full data set up here. Um, and there's a few different things that we can do with this. Um, we, can, uh, we can go through and, well, certainly just to kind of step back here, you can take this entire data set. You want to make sure you grab the GUIDs um, and we can just copy these all the way down 
So I'm just going to copy the entire data set here, control C, and I'm going to just simply paste these in. And you can see that I actually had a filtering here at the top, which uh, remained, which is fine. But now we've just kind of taken that latest data set, copied it in. Um, but by doing so, what it's done is it's actually overridden our formulas that we have here. And so next step then would just be to take these formulas and apply them up. So you can see as I'm dragging these, it's updating all of these values here. So I'm going to take this, copy it all the way up to the top. And there you can see that it found values on every single location where it had an association. And it's related the cost from below the line down here. So sometimes with this, um, because these data sets get quite large, I like actually going through and uh, just kind of splitting the screen. So you can go up and down in both sections here. Um, and it uh, just makes it a little bit easier to view. So, okay, with that, let's uh, kind of continue on this. So I'm going to add that split back in. We can take this next column and we can just drag this all the way up to the top there. And you can see that as we did that, it just populated all of these values and kind of cleaned up that data set for us. So we'll only do a few of these rows here. Let's do the next one. Copy this up to the top. There we go. And you can see that it's picked up all of these associated values. So, all right, okay. Um, with that, uh, this is really how you can set up these workflows. Um, next step is let's just go through and make maybe a slight adjustment here. So um, say for example, let's find like our brick veneer 90 because we're looking at it here. So instead of having to go through and update all of these different wall types within our project file, we can simply just go in and say like, let's round this to like 162. So as soon as we update this one value, it's going to be updating all of these up above the line, which is powerful. As soon as we hit save, we can go back to our Archicad file. We can import these. I actually wanna just kind of pan over here so we can uh, see where these values are going to be impacted. We'll go back, interoperability, import property values we're importing from this version. So we'll open this up, let this run. It all looks good. Import. And there we are. We can see that we've updated those values. So with this now, I'm going to take this, we'll close down this version. Don't need that anymore. So let's walk through how this can actually trickle all the way through into the next step, which would be our estimate. So Let's back out here. I'm going to pull up our international virtual library estimate template. And let's say we'll kind of stick with the brick as a theme here. So let's jump over to our brick. And um, we have one more step here in order to update it through. So we can see we had that 16150. And so we simply just need to go and publish on my 04.2 unit masonry. We'll publish that out. Come back here, refresh, and we can see that's been updated. So to do that one more time, just as kind of like a round trip here, let's do something else like maybe uh, like the CMU 150. So say for an example, if we wanted to just adjust this to like 75 even, we can make that adjustment right there. We can see that it's been updated here. We'll just hit save on this. We'll come back to our uh, composite assemblies report. Let's find where that one's coming from. So CMU 150. Import property values once again. So there's the updates. Import. 
okay? So it's quite simple once you have this set up to just quickly make those adjustments and uh, let this flow all the way through. So we're republishing out that report, 04.2. As soon as this is done, we can jump back and refresh once again. So let's see where that CMU 150 is. So it's somewhere down in here. Um, yeah, there's a few. So let's just refresh and we can see that's been updated. So, so that's really this entire workflow uh, that I wanted to demonstrate is, uh, you know, how we can set up these reports that really contain a lot of the information that we want to manage so that we don't have to actually go through and manage all of these different uh, or all this different information in the actual wall types themselves or the slab types or roof types. We can do that below the line here and then quickly just apply that to our model elements. So it makes it really easy and fast and uh, a little bit more reliable when we want to go and make updates to our project file or in this case our library file so okay if you have any questions on this then uh, definitely make sure to uh, leave that in the comment section hopefully you can see how this uh, workflow really functions we can actually even see that this has been updated into our label there that's pulling some of this information out um, and uh, yeah make sure to go and download that a little sample file if you want to just have an example of these VLOOKUP formulas. Um, pretty straightforward formula. Uh, there are some other ways of doing this exact same thing with some uh, index match type formulas, but this one's uh, really easy to use. So um, feel free to download that and just use this as an example to build up your own. So, all right, we will uh, probably explore this a little bit further on some other videos coming up here. With the, um, with the ARCHICAD 24 release, a lot of this can now be automated into a Python script. So that's kind of the next level that I want to take this is setting up these automations to automatically go through, write the export, uh, reference it in, and then uh, automatically load these in. So we don't have to do a lot of these steps manually. So, um, so that's just the next iteration of where this is going. And I'll look forward to sharing more videos on this topic here in the future. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you here on another video very soon.